Hi, for this video what I want to do is talk to you about transformations of sine or cosine graphs. It doesn't matter whether you are dealing with the sine or the cosine graph, it does the same kinds of transformations. Um, I do have a video that addresses how to find the parent functions of both sine or cosine um, waves, so make sure that you check that out. And basically what's happening in this video is I'm just going to explain to you um, what all of the values do to the sine or cosine parent functions. And then in another video, I will actually demonstrate how those work. Okay, um, so what I have here is two different ways that it might show up in a textbook. So we have f of x equals c plus a times sine b parentheses x minus d, or it can also be written with the sign where the plus c is on the outside of the parentheses back behind. Same thing for cosine, the c can either be in the front or it can be at the back on the outside as long as it's on the outside of the parentheses. Okay, different textbooks use different letters, so just compare to what your textbook is saying, but it really doesn't matter where it is, it's just how it will impact it. Something that I do want to make sure that I point out is that in order for this to work, you do have to have it in the form B parentheses X minus D. So if I had something, say, for example, inside of my sign, where I have 2X minus pi, I would have to rewrite it in this factor form before figuring out what these points do. So I would have to make sure that I rewrite this as sine 2 parentheses x minus pi over 2 because I just divided 2 out of both of these. So it is very important that you understand that. Um, because if you don't understand this process, then it will influence your shifts, which we'll talk about in a minute. So make sure that this is in factored form and not written as 2x minus pi. Okay, so let's continue on with what we have here. A, the yellow A in all of these, it doesn't matter which form it's written in and whether it's sine or cosine, A is always known as the amplitude and we take the absolute value of it. We ignore the sine for the purpose of amplitude because it's basically just telling you if I just were to draw a picture um, of either a sine or a cosine, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to draw a quick sine wave just through one period. The amplitude is the distance from the midpoint. So this right here would be my A term. And so A is just measuring the distance above or below where my um, midpoint of the waves are. Okay, so A measures the amplitude and it tells how high the peak of the wave goes. Make sure that when you're putting an amplitude that you do ignore the sign. It's the absolute value of it. Um, our B term, the term that, like I said, if it's not in factored form, make sure that you factor it out. So this number right here would be my B term. So I would use this formula 2 pi over B to help us find the period. So if I take 2 pi and I divided it by say 2 like I had in that example up there, my period would be pi. So it's going to go through twice as fast is basically what's going to happen there. Um, and so after pi, then my pattern would repeat because I'm going twice as fast. Okay. Um, C is a vertical shift and it always goes in the direction um, that is whether it's positive or negative. So like if I said something like up here, I have the sine curve where it goes through 0, 0. It goes through pi over 2, 1, pi 0. So if I go with this right here, um, let's say that I have something where I have f of x equals 2 plus sine x, that just means that I'm going to shift my graph up 2. So instead of crossing at the x-axis, I would go up 2, and all of my points would shift up 2. So instead of going through 0, 0, I would start up 2, and so I would start right here where that 
line that I just drew was. Okay, when I go over to pi over two, so when I go over to my next point, instead of going through one, I'm gonna go up two more, so I would really go through three. My amplitude doesn't change, and then it would go back through here, and then it would be down here, so it would go the same, it's still the same pattern, it's just that I've shifted it to where the midpoint is now at two. So that's what our C term does. Um, and like I said, the C term can either be written back behind or it can be written in front, so just pay attention to it. Basically, it's not attached with multiplication to the sine function. It has to be addition or subtraction. All right, so D is our phase shift. This is going to be taking our wave right here, and it's going to be shifting it either to the left or to the right. So if I go back to this example here, remember that it does have to be in factored form in order for this to work. So if I took this part right here, this would help me find my phase shift. So this is telling me that I'm going to shift to the right pi over two. So I would take each of these coordinates and I'm gonna shift it this way, pi over two. So I would shift all of these over by pi over two. Okay, um, so let me just go back to that so in case you wanted to write it down. D is always our phase shift and it has to be in factored form like I demonstrated to you. Um, and if it's X minus D, it's always going to shift right by D units. And if it's X plus D, it's always going to be shifting left by D units. All right, so a couple other things that I wanna talk about is when is it reflected? So if A is negative, then it's going to reflect over the X axis. So basically A, remember, is the outside number. So A is multiplying by our sine function and sine, the output of this is our Y, like is our Y coordinate. So if I'm multiplying by a negative, what it's going to do to our graph is instead of being up here at zero, zero, it doesn't notice anything. But if it was negative, it's going to take this point here if I multiply that by a negative and it's gonna shift it down here, okay? This one, there's no change. This one would shift up here. So my Y coordinate, the sign changes when my A term is negative. So when it's negative, it's reflected over the X axis. And if B is, and I just realized I have a mistake here, let me fix that really quickly before I post this. Okay, if my B term, never mind, I have it right, sorry. Um, let me just undo that. All right, if my B term is negative, I was, Thinking of something else, my brain went somewhere else. Um, if B is negative, we're gonna reflect it over the Y axis. So this time, because B is inside, it's going to influence the X coordinate. So instead of changing my um, Y coordinate, it's going to change the sign of my X coordinate. So instead of plugging in pi over two, I would be plugging in negative pi over two and then seeing what the output is. Okay, so for this one, it's actually going to be reflecting this way instead of this way. Okay, so this is my Y axis or my F of X, and so it's going to reflect over here because my X coordinate changes first. So just to recap, A is the amplitude, B helps us find the period, how quickly it takes us to repeat, C helps us with our vertical translation. So whatever's being added or subtracted on the outside is our vertical trans, um, translation or vertical shift. You can call it either one. Um, D is always going to be our right or left movement and it's always going to be the opposite and it must be in factored form. If A is negative, it's reflected over the um, x-axis, and if b is negative, it's reflected over the y-axis. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.